morning, family in Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I hope you had a good night's rest. You're ready again this morning to uh, walk with the Lord, to listen to His voice, to listen to His Holy Spirit and the instructions of the Holy Spirit. I want to share a, a small personal testimony with you this morning about the love of Father God in our lives. And there's many places in our lives, in our past and in our present, and it's still going to be in our future, where we can see the display of the love of God towards us in our lives. And that we can clearly see that we are not orphans anymore, but that we belong to a family. We belong to Father God, and we are His children, and um, He loves us with everything inside of us. So this morning... I just want to share a small, small scripture in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 18. The Bible says, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters. That is a beautiful promise from the creator of heaven and earth, the, 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 the founder of everything, the father of Jesus Christ said that I will be a father to you. You will be my sons and you will be my daughters. And I think the one of the, the first places that I got to know the love of Father God was I was a, a teenager. I was maybe, oh, I, I can't even remember, uh, 15, 16 years old. And I was in the hostel in a different town in a school because we lived about 100 kilometers away from the school that I had to attend. And then every weekend we would go home on a bus, about 50 of us, if I can remember correctly. And one of my friends that went to the same school as, as I did lived just up the street from me. So we went home the one weekend, got there the, the Friday. The Saturday, he came to visit me and my mom and my dad went off to work. Uh, about 8-ish in the morning, and we were alone there. So I opened the garage, and my dad had all these tools and all these, these man toys there. So all the cars were out of the garage, and the, the garage um, was just filled with the, the, the tools and the workbenches and everything. And we started playing around, and my dad did a, a lot of um, carpentry work. He did a lot of woodwork and, and a lot of steel work. So... To the one side of, of the garage, there was a cardboard box filled with wood shavings. And my friend said to me, after about an hour or so, we started getting bored. And my friend said to me, listen, Jacques, I've got fireworks up at the house. Um, must I go and fetch it? And then we see what we can do with it. And obviously, being a teenage boy and fire and explosions and things that... You know, that excites a, a teenage boy. And I said, for sure, go and fetch it. He ran up. Um, I got the, the matches. He came back. And uh, we just started lighting these fireworks outside of the garage in the yard. Um, at that stage, we were allowed to do that. There were no animals close to us um, to irritate them. Everybody was off at work. So we, won't bo we weren't bothering anyone. But then... The, the mistake that we made is we moved the shooting of the fireworks eventually into the garage. And we started putting lids or, or um, coffee tins over the, uh, the fireworks and it, it would blow the coffee tin into the roof. And, and then my friend got this, this bright idea, what we thought was a bright idea at that stage. He saw the box with the wood shavings and he said, can I chuck one in there? Can I throw one in there? I said, yeah, go for it. Let's have a look what it does. So he light, lights it up and he chucks it in there and we stand and, and this thing goes off and it, it shoots these um, wood shavings out of the box. And we thought that this was excellent. It was, we were making a mess and we thought this was, this is what teenage boys must do. And through a few more in there and then we looked at our, our watch and it was getting closer to I think it was maybe about three o'clock in the afternoon and our favorite TV show was about to start 
So my friend said, look, look, it's, it's the time for the TV show. So we quickly ran and we closed the garage door, ran into the house and sat in front of the TV and uh, started watching the TV. At that stage in my life, I had not yet come to salvation. I did not yet know the Lord. Um, I, I can't even remember if we went to church uh, with my parents. I, I, I really can't remember. Um, but still the Lord God Almighty was looking after us. Even in our, um, our BC days, being a Philistine and, and serving the world, the Lord still looked after us. And a few minutes after we sat down, watching the TV program, my mom had finished at her work and she came home from work, stopped the car outside and opened the garage door to park the car. And as she opened the door, the whole garage was on fire. Um, that, that box of shavings had caught a, a, a light. We didn't see it when we went in. And the, the flames were up in, in the roof, in the, the beams of the roof. And it was just, it was... Um, it was something out of a horror movie. And my mom ran, and there was a tap with a, a hose pipe over there, and she was screaming and shouting, and we, we couldn't hear anything. And, and she eventually, with the, the hose pipe and the, the water, um, doused the, the flames, and, and, but the damage was already done. The whole garage was black, and the beams were burnt, and... Um, half of my dad's workbench was, was burnt to, to a crisp. And my mom comes running into the house, into the TV room, and she is soaked. And she is black because of this fire, and she is screaming. And when my mom comes and visits, um, as my family here, you'll, you'll all see her. She is minute. She is small. She is tiny, tiny little lady like this. But that day, she was screaming the roof off of that house of ours. What did you guys do? You set the, the garage alight and there's going to be problems. And my friend didn't wait for um, the, the consequences. He jumped up and ran out there and he ran back home and, and left me alone to deal with it. So my mom said to me, your dad's almost going to be home. So go to my room and go and sit on my bed and wait for him. Now, I knew my dad. I, um, I respected my dad with everything inside of me. He was a strict man. He was someone that when he spoke once, you listened twice. When he told you to do something, you did it immediately. You didn't back chat. You didn't um, ask questions. You didn't negotiate with him. You just said, yes, sir, and you went and you did it. And my dad was was extremely strong. He was a strong human being. And I knew sitting on that bed that day, waiting for him maybe an hour, hour and a half, that was the longest hour in my life that I was waiting for him. And in my mind, I was, I was just imagining the, the beating, the absolute biblical Old Testament beating that I was going to get that day. I knew it. Because I had done something in the first place that I wasn't permitted to do. I wasn't allowed to play in the, in the garage. I wasn't allowed to set things alight and blow things up. And, and, and then my poor mom had to sort it out. And while I was sitting in the, in the room waiting for my dad, my mom was still in the kitchen screaming and shouting. I don't know to who. And then eventually I heard the car in the, in, in the driveway. And my heart was beating. And I was sweating. And... And, and I couldn't sit still and I was, I was planning on trying to run away but I couldn't because there, there were burglar bars before all, in front of all the, the windows and the doors were locked and, and, and I just knew there was problems here. And, and, and my dad was a very, he was a quiet man. He, he, he didn't talk much but when he, when he spoke you listened. And I could hear my dad come into to the kitchen and my mom was just, she was, she was giving him an earful about what happened. And did you see the garage and they burnt the garage down and this and this and this and you must go and sort him out. And, and uh, I heard my dad come down the passage and I, I'll never in my life forget that feeling that I had. I knew that. It felt to me like a death sentence and, and I was waiting for that lethal injection now and, 
And because I could hear him come closer and closer, and nothing that I could do or say, I knew could convince him of, of not giving me that hiding, or, or why I did it was a good idea, or I knew that I was in some serious, serious problems here. And eventually I, I saw the, the door handle uh, move down and, and the door open and my dad came in and he closed the door behind him and my dad was in the army for 11 years and at that stage he was working as a diesel technician and he still had his army belt that he had from, from back then. He had his army belt on. It was a thick leather belt like, like this with a buckle that you could dent a car with. And my dad stood there and he took the, the, the belt off and he, he folded it double. And he went and he sat down next to me on the bed. And, and for about five minutes there was dead silence. Dead silence. And I, I was sitting there stressing and worrying and panicking. And I knew that this was the end of it. I, I didn't even attempt to say anything. I couldn't cover up what I did and after five minutes of absolute silence my dad did something that he had never done in his life to myself or my brother before my dad did something that was out of the ordinary that that the men in our family weren't used to and didn't know after five minutes of absolute silence and that guilt that was that was surging through me my dad put the belt down next to him on the bed and he put his arm around me and he pulled me closer to him and he hugged me and he said to him, my boy, don't even worry about it. <laughs> I was also a teenager once. And I just burst out crying and, and, and I thought, this is absolutely amazing. This is the definition of fatherly love. And I can remember a few years after that, when I came to salvation and I, and I met Jesus for the first time and I, I went through the word of God and I got to know my father in heaven, I could see a mirror image of our father in heaven and that day in my father's room, in my, my earthly dad's room, when he took me after I did something so absolutely wrong against his will, he took me and he hugged me and, and he forgave me immediately, putting no guilt on me, for, forcing me not to do or say anything. And, and right there, when I, when I came to salvation and I, and I started learning to know Father God in heaven, I saw a mirror image of what happened that day in, in that room. And, and, and I can just say this to you this morning, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers in Jesus, that our Father God is a God that is drenched and dripping with love. And many times we as people have in mind that, that Father God is sitting on a throne with a scepter or a stick or a whip, just waiting for us to do something wrong so that He can crack that whip or He can smack us or, or, or He can punish us. But I'm, I'm here this morning to say that, that this beautiful book teaches us and gives us, paints us a total different picture of our Father in heaven. It gives us a picture of a Father that is so loving that in the book of Romans, it says, it gives us a promise that, that if we have sinned, who we who are sinners, if we go to God and we ask Him forgiveness, that He is a faithful and He is a just God and He will forgive us. And he, and he loves us. And again, I've said it over and over again. That doesn't give me the right to then to go on carrying on sinning. But what I'm saying is that that day I made a mistake. I didn't deliberately go and set fire to, um, to, to the garage. It was an honest mistake. I wasn't thinking and I didn't know that that would be the consequences. So sometimes in our lives, we do and say things that we do it with a good intention, but it's not a God intention. So then it turns out to, 
to, to hurt someone or break something down and we didn't mean it. That is what I mean. Then when Father God comes and he puts his arm around us and he says, my son, my daughter, don't worry about it. I forgive you. It's all said and done. It's all finished now. I just wanted to share that with you this morning. Just so that you can go into this weekend knowing that my Father and your Father in heaven is a Father of love. He is, he is absolutely the definition of love. And that He isn't sitting there waiting to punish us. He isn't. It is unfortunate that sometimes people make wrong choices, wrong decisions, or they blatantly just choose not to want to follow the Lord. And then unfortunately the consequences is one day to spend eternity in hell. And to know today, as you are sitting hearing my voice, that the Bible teaches us that Father God did not create hell for humans. He didn't. Hell was created for Satan and his demons. But unfortunately, for those who want to follow Satan and his demons, that is what they are going to have to face for eternity one day. But praise the Lord God Almighty that he made a plan through his son Jesus, that he sacrificed his son Jesus so that we, when we make a mistake, our Father can sit next to us, he can put his arm around us, pull us closer to him, and he can say, my son, my daughter, I love you, I forgive you, don't worry about it. So as we go into prayer now, if you are sitting this morning with guilt because of something that you did or said, I, I, I want to assure you that in this time of prayer right now, if you ask your Father in heaven for, for forgiveness, He will give it to you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your kindness and your patience. Thank you, Father God, that you have called us to be sons and daughters of the, of, of the Most High. We thank you, Father God, that you have bought us and paid for us by the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, that if we have trespassed or sinned, that we can go to you, Father God, and we can ask forgiveness, and that you will hear us and you will forgive us, Lord Jesus. And then through your Holy Spirit, you guide, lead, and teach us not to do that same thing, not to trespass again, not to sin again, not to make that same mistake. And we thank you for that, Father God. Today we are sitting here, and all we are asking is that if we have done or said anything that is against your will or your kingdom, against your, your word, Father God, that you will please, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, forgive us today. Thank you for the forgiveness, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for who you are in our lives, Father God. Thank you for everything. Thank you that you have blessed us the way that you have blessed us. And we worship you, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We love you with everything inside of us. And we pray and we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, family in Jesus. I hope that you have a blessed day. Um, and as we go into the weekend. Um, I hope you have a time of rest um, and, and that uh, you'll draw closer to the Lord, that you'll reach out to your family. Um, spend that time wisely, um, as we've spoken about previously. And then until we meet again, be blessed in the name of Jesus.